Hello and welcome to another webinar with Lightning Tools. Uh, today uh, it's not going to be me that's speaking. We've got uh, Sandy Usia from Lightning Tools, and I'll, I'll let Sandy introduce herself in, in just one moment. Um, but uh, welcome, Sandy. And uh, what I did want to say is um, Sandy's obviously going to be uh, showing you the modern web parts today in uh, modern SharePoint Online. And um, you're probably going to have quite a few questions. So what I'd like to do is at the end of the webinar, we'll be opening up for a sort of Q&A session. And uh, you can raise your questions in, in a couple of ways. Uh, one, uh, you can raise your hand uh, if you want to speak and we can unmute you and you can ask away. Uh, or the other way um, is to use the uh, questions panel and you can post your questions in there or the chat panel and uh, I'll read those out uh, for Sandy to answer at the end of the session. So uh, thank you very much everybody for joining and over to you Sandy. Thanks Brett. Hi. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I appreciate your having me on for this webinar so I can uh, talk about SharePoint web parts which is one of my favorite topics. Uh, today we're going to look at SharePoint built-in web parts or a lot of people call them out of the box web parts, but um, really when's the last time your software came in a box? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I tend to call them built in web parts myself. But uh, first, uh, just a little introduction about me. Um, I am the technical evangelist for Lightning Tools, which means I get to do things like this and uh, go to conferences and write uh, when, when they exist and write blog posts and things like that. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP with uh, my focus in Power Apps and Power Automate. And I'm co-host of the Flow Pro Show along with Daniel Laskowitz from the Netherlands. Um, if you get a chance, uh, go to our YouTube channel, which is Flow Pro Show. Uh, we just did a show yesterday where we had an Ask Me Anything session with Charles Lamana, who's uh, one of the corporate vice presidents at Microsoft in charge of the whole Power Platform. It was a really, really good session. So um, that's a kind of a personal plug there, but uh, I, think it, I think you'll really enjoy it. And if you want to get in touch with me, I'm most often found on Twitter. Uh, at my uh, handle is Sandy U, or you can send me an email. I'll have my contact details later. So, uh, what is a SharePoint web part, and why should you care? So, web parts are the building blocks of a SharePoint page. They're what let you display content to people who are viewing your page. And such as the web parts on this page. So rather than using PowerPoint slides for this, um, for this webinar, I'm going to just use SharePoint built-in web parts and put them together and, and show you about them that way. So here I've just used some web parts and added a kind of a side section uh, to my page to, to give you a, a little view of that. So specifically, we're going to talk, as Brett mentioned, about modern, and I'm putting that in air quotes, um, modern web parts for modern SharePoint pages. Um, that's been around for about four years now, so I don't know if it's technically modern anymore, but um, these are available for SharePoint Online, and many of them are also available for SharePoint 2019 on-premises where you can also do modern pages, but many of them are not. So uh, we'll take a look at which ones are or aren't available for, for on-prem. So we're going to take a look at adding some of the web parts. Um, I've got a link here, this, this bit.ly link to web part docs goes to Microsoft's web part documentation, which I've got open here. Um, it's a, actually a, really a quite a good reference, so I would recommend going here if you are wondering about the configuration on any of the web parts. We're going to go through a fair number of uh, the more useful ones, I think, um, but there are a lot more. I'll just scroll down a little bit. It shows about adding a web part, but then it, there's a whole list of all of the available web parts. So as, they, as Microsoft adds more, they are added to this list, and then each one has a link out to a whole page just on that web part that um, shows you 
uh, all the configuration, well, they show you most of the configuration options sometimes. I've noticed they haven't quite caught up. Um, and it shows you on this page which ones are or are not available in SharePoint Server 2019, like for example, page properties is not, and so on. And some of them are only available on uh, pages which are or on sites which are Office 365 group sites. So for example, plan, the planner web part isn't available on communication sites. So you've got that note right up front that tells you that. Uh, so this is a really useful reference and I would I would really recommend taking a look at that. So again, that's this uh, bit.ly link for web part docs. And then I've got a blog series on Lightning Tools blog about um, modern web parts. It's kind of midstream at the moment, but um, a lot of them are shown there and that uh, that takes a deep dive into a lot of the different web parts. So that might also be something that, that you want to take a look at. That's this link for web parts blog. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, look at what the web parts are that you can use. So we're just going to walk through some of those, obviously not all of them in this session, but, uh, but some of the ones that I especially I think are interesting. So first, to add a web part to a page, uh, I'm going to kind of take this at the very basics and assume no knowledge of, of any of this. But um, so you put the page into edit mode. So that assumes that you have permission to do that. And once you do that, you get a couple more options at the top of the page. So you can uh, save your changes as a draft. You can discard any changes that you've made. And relatively recently, uh, once you've made a change, you can undo it, which is pretty nice, um, and just go back to that, um, you know, the action just before that. So first thing you'd want to do is probably add a new section. Every, all the web parts are placed into sections and you can create pretty interesting layouts on your whole page by adding these different type of sections. So this uh, section right here that already is on here uh, is a two column section. I can see that by when I clicked the plus to go to section layout. When, I'm actu when I actually have a section there, I can edit that section and I can see which layout I'm currently using and I could choose to have a little bit of a background shading to that section, that'll set it off pretty nicely. But I could, depending on the type of web parts you put in the sections, you'll be able to find um, whether which type of columnar layout makes the most sense. For example, if you do a three column layout, some of the larger web parts aren't really gonna work very well on that, but some of the tighter sort of web parts that probably would look pretty good on a three column layout and save you some vertical space. So that's really totally dependent on what you're trying to, to add there. Uh, so I'm going to add a new one column section. And the first web part we're going to look at is the news web part. So when I go to add a web part, I click on the little plus, which as you can see, if I just click away from that, it appears as you hover over it. So it's not there, but when I hover into the section, that'll appear at a new web part. And so I know I want to add the news web part so I can search for it. I can start to type it and then it'll show me the, um, the web parts that have to do with news. But something else that would be useful is if you expand this toolbox, this web part toolbox, then you can see all of the web parts by category or in different ways. You can see them alphabetical and very, you know, specific categories that you know that you're looking for. But I think when, especially when you're first getting started and you're not sure what all web parts are available, this is a good um, section to go to because otherwise they're just alphabetic. Uh, and this gives you a better idea of the kinds of things you can add. Like if I'm just wanting to add some, some text or these divider lines or there's a spacer. So each one of these, there are actually more of these. So if I go to see all, I can see, um, there's a, a vertical spacer and uh, you know, just plain text, things like that, that are, give you kind of basic text, media, and content, as it says. Um, 
So I think I would recommend going to this area and uh, seeing what all exists in the different categories. So you've got some different connectors. And then if you have any uh, third party web parts, or I'm not sure why exactly some of these are in other, but uh, they'll appear down here in the other section. So I'm going to just go ahead and do news again and add a news web part. So by default, it's going to come up with some actual news content. And the reason it's doing that is that right now I'm on a hub site. And so just very slight digression into that. Um, if you haven't used a hub site before in SharePoint Online, uh, that lets you create an, an Office 365 group type site. And um, then you can associate other sites with that. And you end up with a um, kind of a structure where you've got one site with other other sites attached to it. They're not sub-sites, so they're not underneath it, but they're associated to it. And here I've got a coaching hub site, and then I have associated sites for in my fictitious um, software coaching business. Uh, then I have uh, associated sites for different platforms that our company does coaching on. And when I added that news web part to the site, it automatically assumed that I would like to aggregate news coming from my different associated sites. And so you can see that here's a news article from the SharePoint coaching site, associated site, here's one from the Power Automate one, here's one from the Power Apps one. And if you want to change that though, you can. So whenever I'm on a web part, I click on it, to be able to bring up this menu on the side and I can edit the web part. And for each of, for all of these uh, modern web parts, that'll take you to some sort of configuration pane. It varies quite widely and it completely depends on which web part it is, uh, the type of thing that you'll see in this configuration pane. But the news web part has a fair number of configuration options. So Again, by default, it's showing the news source as all sites in this hub, but you could set it to just show things on that site or just select certain sites. So I could choose that and then actually be able to search all through all of my sites and show um, news from specific sites. And then I could just change it to recommended for the current user and that's going to use um, signals from whoever the current user is and what they've been interested in and, and things like that to be able to recommend news to them. I think that's a little bit of a black box, so I don't know uh, that I would rely on something like that necessarily, but, uh, but that's available to you. And then you can choose the layout. So by default, it's just going to show, um, so this is showing in a what they're calling a hub news format. I kind of like the tiles. Um, so that gives you a kind of a more visual. This is best if your news articles have um, some kind of visual attached to them all the time. Uh, another one might be having a top story on the side, which would be um, could be your your newest story and then the and then the other ones here. Uh, I do want to just show if you are creating news and here you can add news within the web right within the web part actually after I publish it. So I'll do that later. Um, so then you have your different layouts and you can see you know your different options. Do you want to show how many views that news article has had, who wrote it, uh, when it was published? and hide the whole web part if there's nothing to show. You can filter it. So if you only want to bring back news related to some certain topic, you could search uh, or filter it and do that. You can enable audience targeting on this web part. So what that means is that you could set it so only members of specific groups can see that uh, that news, those specific news articles that are targeted toward them. To be able to do that, you actually have to 
just to delve into that a little bit, you have to set that up within the site that the news is coming from. So if I go to, for example, the uh, SharePoint coaching site, and I have some news there. If I want to turn on audience targeting in the news part, in the news web part on the homepage, on the hub site page, then I would first need to go to the pages of the um, site that the news is coming from. And I would have to, in the site pages library, I would have to enable audience targeting. And then each individual article, I would have to say that I want to target that to uh, and, and specify which audience I want to target that to. I believe it's under the details. Right. So I, if, yeah, so I have uh, enabled audience targeting on the whole library already. So now within that article, I can specify. Um, a name or an email address that says, but normally this would be, you'd want to do that by groups, not specific people. Um, and then that article will only show up in the news web part to that group of people. So I just wanted to mention that because some web parts have that um, option. Many don't, but uh, the ones that do, you might see it and wonder how to do, how to handle that. Um, and then I can also be really granular about how I specify the, the order of the news. But it's nice to be able to just automatically uh, kind of roll up the news that's coming from each of my associated sites to my hub site. Next thing, we're going to look at uh, the highlighted content web part. That's another really popular one. So I'm going to add that in the same section. And that's one of the featured web parts. So it's all you always see it up here in this top section. So it's easy to get to. That lets you aggregate content, actual content from your um, from pretty much anywhere that you choose. It's pretty flexible as far as being able to do that, uh, as far as your where your data is coming from. Uh, it's giving me here documents. So by default, it's going to show me the most recent documents. And also, as you see, it's um, bringing in documents from my different associated sites. So by default, it knows that since this is a hub site, I might want to display documents from my associated sites. So that's what it's going to show me. So let's see some of the options here. We're not going to get into all of these because some of them get quite detailed, but um, I can narrow search results with a filter. I can also use a custom query um, using uh, either the search KQL or CAMEL. Um, I, we have an article about that on the Lightning Tools blog. On the content, right now, as I said, it defaults to all the sites in the hub, but you get a fair number of options here. So I could have it just a specific document library or um, on this particular site or pages, or I can select sites like I could for the news or all sites would be the whole tenant. Um, I can choose what type of content. So it gives you these various types, but if you have some other kind of content, you can go with all and then you can filter it down by the content type later. But um, some of the things that you might want to do maybe is just show videos or just show documents. And then you can get more specific with the type of document and just show you know, particular types of documents. And again, these options will change depending on what I choose here. So if I chose videos, then I don't get that option about the, the type of document, but it's because documents was the default, I get that option. Then I can do some filtering and sorting. So I get various filters and, um, they're slightly limited here, so I can, I mean, things like content includes certain words, that's kind of nice, um, or things that were created by a certain person, or you can get a lot more specific if you use managed property um, filters, because the, the highlighted content web part is based on SharePoint search anyway. And so if you 
know how to use search managed properties, then you can filter by managed property and um, and get quite granular with that, but you do kind of know how to go about doing that. And then it can be sorted in a few different ways by just some certain things you can't sort by, well, you can sort of sort by any column you want if you use the managed properties, but again, you do have to understand and, and know what that means. Uh, this is another one where you can en enable audience targeting, and so the same thing would apply in that case where the underlying document library, in this case, would have to be enabled for audience targeting, and then the individual documents would be set for specific audiences. And we've got a couple different layouts here. The grid would be the default, and we can say how many items we would want to display in that. So this is just a way of um, highlighting <laughs> uh, content in in your on your page, but also um, aggregating specific things. As you can see, though, like if I go to, so I have the grid view right now, but say I change to the list view, these are the columns that I can display and I can't really, you know, if I had some metadata um, for each of these documents, if I had other columns in my document library or if I was displaying things other than documents uh, like list items, I don't really have a way of specifying which columns I would like to display on that. So just something to be aware of that, that that's a limitation there. But a pretty useful web part really. Next, I'm going to add a sites web part. And what this does is it lets you um, show different sites, have little site panels like you would see on your main SharePoint homepage. Like when you click on SharePoint at the in the top menu, you get to your main SharePoint homepage. Um, and you have these, these little panels for each site and it shows the activity that's gone on in the site and it lets you click on it and go right to that site. Uh, so this might be handy, I, I think, especially on a hub site because you can see that I had that um, navigation at the top, of, which I guess doesn't show up right now, but I had the navigation at the top uh, where I could go to the different um, associated sites uh, through a menu, but that's a manual thing that you have to add the links to the associated sites. But if you want something sort of more automated, here you can see that automatically when I added the sites web part, it assumed that I want to show the sites from that are associated to this hub site. And it makes a nice visual view because each of the sites can have its own logo and I, it, they've all got the same theme because they inherit that from the hub site. So they're all orange, but they've got their own logos. So it makes it kind of more visual. And if I had more people in my tenant, I could see you know, that different people had contributed or, or read things and so on. And I can edit this and uh, include some different sorts of uh, sites. So like whatever sites the current user visits frequently, or I could actually, again, get one of those tree views where I select sites from anywhere in my tenant. So I can be very choosy about what I show. So you could, for example, um, create a sites web part that shows all sites related to XYZ or whatever. And, and then those are the ones that'll show up for people. So it's just a way of bringing that to the forefront for people. And then I get the various layouts as usual and how many of those I want to show at a time. I find that a useful web part. I don't know that I see it used all that often, but I think it's useful. Next, I'm going to add a different sort of a section. I'm going to um, add some sort of date related uh, things. So I want to put that, I want to set those off a bit. Uh, so I'm going to add a section where I've got a larger um, segment to the left and smaller to the right. And I'm going to shade it so that it gets offset. So I'm going to shade it in a light um, color of my theme color. So now I've got my section that I want. Uh, here I'm going to add a countdown timer. 
this is useful if you have some event coming up and you want to um, have a countdown to it, uh, or you can show, you kind of do it backwards and show it uh, counting up. So what I want to add, so let's just say I've got some kind of event coming up next Thursday, and then I can decide what I want the timer to show as, maybe just days is fine. Eh, no, that I think we'll go to minutes. We don't really need seconds. And then I really like this feature where you can add a call to action right within the countdown timer. So um, maybe, and that has added this little button right here that wasn't there before. Uh, so maybe it's some kind of event people need to register for. So I can put in a register link and, and add the link right there. And that way people can see, you know, here's our event coming up and, uh, you can register for it. I can add a background image to make it look nice. And so let's go with one that I had used already elsewhere. So that just kind of makes it a little fancier. <laughs> um, and then in the title itself, I can make that a little bit uh, more transparent. I think that looks nicer. Um, and the, so that you can decide, you know, if your font should be dark or light. And then I'm going to just add a title, our next event. And there I've got a countdown to that. If I wanted to say um, a count up, then I can just set the date to be sometime in the past. Like maybe we want to say we've had you know, 55 days or however many days since the last uh, lost time accident or something like that. I can do that by putting a date when I enter the date, put it in the past, and then it'll show count up um, as as you go through how many days it's been since that happened. So I, th I like this for like a launch event or, or any kind of um, webinar or something like that. Over here, somewhat related, I'm going to add an events web part. And you can see they sort of come up related to each other. And again, this is going to automatically assume that I want to show events coming from my associated sites. So I think you can probably see the advantage here of setting up uh, hub sites and associated sites when there are so many web parts that automatically will uh, display data coming from those associated sites. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so here I've got some different uh, events coming from my different associated sites and I can do, so there are some options I have here. Again, it's defaulted to all sites in the hub, but again, I have similar options to those other ones. I can go with specific events lists and uh, specific sites and whatnot. I could, filter them by the category. So if when you're creating the events and these are either the modern style events or if you're using classic um, SharePoint events um, uh, to enter your events, they'll both show up in this events web part. But um, I could enter a category. So like if you've categorized your events by meeting or holiday or birthday or whatever, uh, then you can filter by that. I can choose a date range, so just everything that's coming up, or you know, this month, next two weeks, or whatever. Um, choose how I want to display it. So here, because I've only got it in that narrow uh, um, section of the page, even though it's set on film strip by default, it kind of went to the compact. It, it um, uh, reorganized itself to fit the section that I put it in, which is also nice. And I can specify how many I want to show. So it's only showing, I think, four because that's what I've got right now. But you can see just by the name of them that they're coming from the different associated sites, although unlike the news or the highlighted content, it doesn't tell you where those are coming from. But I can, if I want to then go to see all, I can click on that if, once the page is published and uh, see the actual list of events and get, and I as the person viewing it can get more granular with how I want to see the events. 
And then lastly, I think, before we move on to something a little different, I'm going to do a couple of graphic type web parts. So I added a new section with two columns and I'm going to here add a forms web part because I want to display to people coming to the page the results of a survey. So this takes you, this uh, is for Microsoft Forms. So if you haven't used that before, it's a really simple part of Office 365, but a simple way to create um, feedback forms or information gathering forms. And then that data can be displayed graphically uh, depending on what types of questions people are answering. And on in the web part, I can display the actual form. So if I want people to answer the questions right on the SharePoint page, I could do that. Or if I want to display the results of a, a form that has been, uh, people have entered data into it via another means, I can display the results here too. So I'm going to add an existing form. And so when I do that, it, take, it opens up the configuration pane for this web part. And it wants the web address of the form that I want to display. So to get that, I'm going to click on the link that says go to Microsoft Forms. That'll open that in a new tab. And so I can go to my forms and the one I want is this web part poll. So I open the form, so you open the form that you want to display on your SharePoint page in the web part and grab the URL of that. So I'm, I've control c to that and then paste that over here in the form web address. And then here's where I decide, am I actually putting the form itself on this page or am I putting the results on the page? Here I wanna show the results and I can choose whether or not I want um, people to be able to, to view that summary. I'll just say okay. And then close the configuration pane. And then I can see those are the results of my web part survey that I had taken a while back um, where people were saying what were their favorite SharePoint modern web parts. And so that gives me that graphic. So I think that's that's a pretty cool way of uh, giving feedback to people if you know if they've taken a form it'll give you the real time feedback as as people reply to respond to that poll or survey or whatever it is. And another graphic uh, element that you can add is the quick chart. So that lets you do, as it says, a very quick chart. Um, it's really, really basic, but if you have some data that you want to just display graphically on your page, you can do that. Um, so when this first came out, it was just that you could enter data right into the web part and it would display that, so it was very static. But now you can, um, well, choose one of two kinds of charts. So again, pretty basic, but you can either enter the data, so actually enter data labels and values and add more. Um, and as I said, that's very static. So you'd have to go in and redo that every time you want to update your chart. But now you can also get data from a SharePoint list as long as it's on this site. That's your only option there. And it would be um, some sort of custom list that has data in it that would make sense. So here I've only got one option to choose from because that I've only got one list on this site that has uh, data that's chartable basically. And then I just specify which uh, column has the data, which is I get one choice there. <laughs> and then the x-axis labels are going to be the title. Uh, this is it's a really basic list and so I only have those choices. And then that should give me my chart. I'll just scroll down here to see. It moved it down just because I've got the configuration panel over here. But so that gives me my chart and you know it's got little call outs and so on. So, but again, it's really basic. Uh, those are the only options you have, but um, it might be something useful uh, to be able to, to chart some data coming from a SharePoint list. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and republish this page. 
So you can just see how everything uh, kind of went together there. So I've got my my news and now that it's published, I could add more news here if I have permission to do that. Um, and that news posts, will, those news posts that I would add here within this web part will end up as pages within this current site that I have the web part in. So if I add, say to add a news post, it's going to create a new page, take me to that page and let me put whatever I want on it. If I add a news link, I really like that feature. Um, so you can, you know, if you run across something on the web that, uh, or on your in your SharePoint tenant that uh, would be of interest and should be part of news, you can add news link and that lets you just put a URL in and then that becomes a news page that then will get added to this news web part. And you can do that obviously within any of your sites. So if I did that same thing within one of my associated sites, then that news item would be added into the rolled up uh, news web part. We've got our highlighted content, our sites, our events and our countdown and our graphics. Now I want to show you also the document web part, but um, that only will let you display documents from a document library on the current site. And on my hub site, I don't happen to have any documents. I, I'll, all of them are on the associated, the individual coaching sites. So I'm gonna to go to the SharePoint coaching site in this case and take a look at that document web part because this would be a pretty common one that you'd want to use too. There's a document web part and a list web part and that lets you basically get a view because you can specify what view um, into your documents. So let's edit this page. And I'm going to use this two column section I've already got here and add a document web part and so document library. And you can see that it gives me the choices of the document libraries that exist on this site, this SharePoint, SharePoint coaching site. And uh, so I'm going to go with just my basic documents library. And so it'll show I've only got a couple documents, but it would show um, as many as you specify. So basically the options you get here are I could choose a view. So if I have set up some custom views in that document library, which I normally would have maybe um, you know, sorted or grouped in different ways, then I can switch to that view in this web part and then it'll show that view. I can type, if I've got folders in my document library and I only want to display the items from a single folder in this web part, I can do that by typing the folder name. And then I can decide how many documents, rough-ish, <laughs> I want to display in this document web part. So really it's just about the size of the web part. I mean, it says about five or about 15 items because it kind of depends on how how much you're showing there or how big your web part is on your page. Um, but I'm just setting it to auto size and then whether or not I want to show this command bar, like whether or not I want to let people add new documents or upload or whatnot right from this web part. Right now it is, but I could choose to hide that if I want to, if I don't want people being able to do that because maybe I only want them to, to view. So I'll just click on that. So I applied that and now you can't, <clears throat> you can't see that. But I could, as the person viewing it, I could click on see all and that would take me right to the document library. Uh, one thing that was pointed out to me recently, which I hadn't realized, is if you've specified a folder, um, that you just want to view a folder here and you click on see all, you end up going back to the main document library, <clears throat> not to just that folder. So that's something just to be aware of that as far as how you structure your, your libraries. <clears throat> and then what's very interesting is I can create, there are just a few um, built-in web parts that you can connect to each other. Um, and the document library web part is one of those. And I can connect it to a file viewer web part. That's one of the featured ones. So you can use the file viewer web part in a couple different ways. One is what it's defaulting to here. I pressed nothing <laughs> just now and it automatically opened up the, um, the 
I don't know what you'd call this thing, the, the panel that, that lets you choose what you want to display. So I could say, I could choose one of these documents and it would just go ahead and display that and display it in the file viewer. So this might be handy if maybe you've got a PowerPoint presentation or a document that you want everybody to read and you want to just get that specific document front and center on your SharePoint page, you can use the file viewer and they can scroll through the entire document. I can, I mean, it's the whole thing, the multi-page document. I can page through it. Same with the PowerPoint. You can go through each slide and it's just right there on the SharePoint page. They don't have to open anything or download anything. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I could, uh, if I want to change the file, I can do that. But let's say I think I actually need to start over. Yeah, so if I cancel that, yeah. So to do what I want to do to connect it, I actually have to start over and I'm going to delete that web part, add a new one, at least that's the way I've found to do it. And so this is not at all intuitive, but if I choose to do nothing here, if I choose nothing and cancel, then I can uh, go to the edit web part and I get a different configuration screen, which lets me either go ahead and add a file or it lets me connect. And again, this is not obvious, but there are these three little dots up here, the ellipsis. Um, I mean, it does say that, but you know, who reads those things? Uh, so you can click on the ellipsis and connect to source. And I can choose what to connect to. In this case, it's it's another web part on my page and the only web part on this page that I has connection capabilities is the documents web part that I just added. And there's nothing else to do. So I close the configuration pane and then now it says to anybody visiting the page and I'm going to go ahead and republish that this web part is connected to documents. So if I select an item on the documents web part, then that's what it'll show in the file viewer web part. So that's nice if you want people to be able to quickly view something that's in the document library web part without again having to go to the document library or I mean, the other option is they click on it and it just opens in Word, but if you prefer they don't even leave the SharePoint page, uh, you can do it that way. The other things that can be connected are there's a list web part and that would let you display contents from any list that you have. And again, uh, it lets you choose what view. So if you've set up views on your custom lists, then you can um, display those views. And then there's a list properties web part um, that lets you view the um, whatever the columns are and the column values so that somebody could choose the list item over here and it would display all of the column values even if they're not shown in the in the list view web part basically what's that that's what that is um, then they could see the properties over in the list properties web part and um, and even modify them right right there so that's kind of similar and then there's um, you can also connect an embed web part which gets a little more complicated but we have an article again we have an article on that on the lightning tools blog so i just want to mention a couple of the other ones uh, if i go back into edit mode here just so that we can see them but then we'll do some q a uh, so if i go like i'm adding and open that up um, we didn't look at image or image gallery. So there's image and an image that you show just a single image, um, which can be literally anything, but it's a nice way to dress up your page. Image gallery lets you display, choose a collection of images. So if you've got a, an image library on your site, or um, I believe on that one, you can go anywhere. I, I, not sure about that uh, but anyway you can display um, a set of images and then in different layouts and, and things like that you've got uh, things like call to action and there's a button as well which is somewhat similar but that lets you put um, uh, you know something that goes to some link again similar to the registration button we did in the countdown uh, the bing maps is actually kind of interesting uh, that lets you put in any location and you get a nice map of that location for your page you can add 
text so that you can say, you know, this is a point of interest or there's something going on here. Um, so that's kind of nice if you're trying to pinpoint, say, where a project is located or, or something like that. Maybe it's not so relevant right now <laughs> uh, as far as where actually things actually are physically, but uh, uh, the hero web part is sort of interesting. That's um, a way of letting you have kind of visual links to things. So as the little icon shows, it gives you um, various layouts that are image intensive, I would say. So that's good for especially a communication site. And um, if you just want to have links to things but have them be very visual, then a hero web part is a nice way to do that. Um, there are other links type web parts, which I guess would be under here. So like there's quick links, which gives you basically a list of links. Um, and they can have icons beside them, but other than that, they're they're not super visual, but they're nice and compact. Uh, whereas the highlight or the um, hero web part is not at all compact, <laughs> but um, but it's very visual. So that, so that's nice in that case. And then you can do things like have your bring in your Yammer conversations, um, Twitter things like uh, people is one that you can use to display sort of. Uh, descriptive cards of people in within your tenant, uh, maybe like the owner of the site or project leaders on a project site, that sort of thing. Planner is another useful one, and that would work if you've got planner plans associated to the site that you are on. Um, so you, or actually I think they could be any planner plans. Um, but you would specify which plan you want to display in the web part, and then um, you can display the individual uh, tasks. If you've used Planner before, there's like a, a Kanban sort of view of it, and then there's a chart sort of a view that shows like which tasks still need completed and so on. Um, you can choose to display either of those in the Planner web part. We've There's a Power BI web part, so that is what it sounds like. It lets you display a Power BI visual right on your screen. Um, there's a Power Apps one also, which uh, I'm not sure what category they've put that in, but um, kind of similarly, you can embed a Power App right on your SharePoint uh, page. Just being aware with both that and the Power BI that only people who have access to those will be able to view them. So for example, if you've got, in the case of Power Apps, um, if you've got guest users um, currently, uh, and depending on how you have things set up, they wouldn't necessarily be able to see that Power App. Um, and then things like a world clock uh, and weather. So if you just, you know, maybe again, if you maybe have projects and you want to show on their home pages what time it is in that part of the world and what the weather is in that part of the world, those would be handy things to have. But I think basically that's a pretty good rundown of SharePoint built-in web parts. And I think I think we'll open it up to questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sandy. That was uh, an excellent webinar as always. Um, so we do have uh, a, a few questions. One was from okay. uh, from Topolika, who was just asking if the session is recorded. Uh, so yeah, if anybody is wondering the same, uh, yes it is, and uh, it will be available on our website. So you can go and find all of our uh, previously recorded uh, webinars on the Lightning Tools site under the webinars link, um, or also by following our YouTube channel. Um, so that's uh, uh, youtube.com uh, slash lightning tools and you'll be able to subscribe to that and uh, and of course see any uh, previous webinars or any future webinars that we, we post there as well mm -hmm. um, so there's another question from uh, Jessica so Jessica has asked um, well she said this has been very informative so uh, thank you <laughs> uh, and she says that she works with the text web part um, for very text heavy websites and uh, what's your mm. recommendation on how best to align the text web parts across columns? Mm. Well, so across columns, I guess, I mean, it depends. So she's saying it's a text heavy. So mm -hmm. um, that would be interesting to just look at. So I guess I would tend toward putting text if, 
if you know if that's kind of the main thing you want at the top like here i already have two columns oops where okay um i guess i would tend toward adding another single column that's that spans and then add the text web part and i just noticed recently and i don't know when this happened but um there are a lot more things you can do now with this um uh, ellipsis menu on the text web part as far as being able to add um, more formatting and highlighting and paragraphing and, and all that sort of thing. Um, you can insert tables right in there and so on. I'm not exactly sure about the question specifically, but I, if you're talking about spanning columns, that's the only way I would know to do that is to create another section that spans the columns. Okay, wonderful. Does that Thank you. The question. <laughs> uh, I, I think so. Um, but okay. yeah, uh, Jessica, if you uh, if you want to know more, uh, you can always reach out to us as well. And yeah, uh, feel free to contact me. <laughs> absolutely. So Sandy's uh, email is sandy at lightningtools dot com, and uh, myself is uh, brett at lightningtools dot com. Uh, so yeah. we have another question from uh, Mariana as well. And okay. um, oh, so hi, Mariana. <laughs> Okay, you guys know each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, excellent. So, uh, so yeah, Mariano is asking uh, if there is a web part that would allow a user to embed an XML feed, um, such as uh, WordPress XML feeds. Uh, well, so there is an embed web part. Um, it. I'm not sure. I'd have to probably look that one up because uh, I'm not exactly sure what is meant by an XML feed. I'm afraid. To, I mean, I and you can embed pretty much anything if it will work in an iframe. I think that's the main consideration there. So it could be. This is about the embed. So you can add an embed code and you know get things like videos and so on, but um, that's the dynamic content. So yeah, I guess I would say look here on this embed web part page. And if it's something that could go into an iframe, then yes, I'm not so sure about a feed though, really, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you, Sandy. And we've also got another one um, again from Todd. So, uh, do you have any advice for taking an organizational chart for an organization and plotting or planning how to translate that into a SharePoint Online information architecture? Oh, oh, uh, so this is more of an architecture question than a web part? Uh, I guess question? it's uh, displaying, yeah, a, a form of organizational chart mm. uh, onto a site. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you're talking about uh, like displaying the maybe maybe different sites that are related to different departments in an organization, I I think I would like the the sites web part for that because you can be really specific with that. So you can just say I want even if they're not in hub site and associated sites you can choose any site from anywhere in your tenant to display in the sites web part. So you could do that. And I think there were some options on um, not necessarily displaying it like this, but uh, could be a little more compact if you need it to be. But um, I think if I'm understanding that question <laughs> correctly, uh, that might be, if you're and talking about only built-in web parts, I think that's what I would lean toward. But if we're talking about org chart of people, uh, I don't know that there's an easy out of the box way to do that because you know there's the people web part, but that's very manual. You've just got to add individual people individually and they just display in a certain way, like there's a compact view and so on, but not really sort of an org chart kind of a view of them. Okay, thank you, Sandy. So I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've got a, a thumbs up from Todd. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, a final question again from um, Mariana, and that's about the accessibility. Uh, so, mm. are modern sites in SharePoint 2019 on premises and SharePoint Online accessible? Meaning, are the sites in compliance with the ADA, American Disabilities Act? Hmm. Well, so, that's a good question. <laughs> I know there's a good um, 
support article on that from Microsoft, which would be good mm, to sure. check out. Yeah, so if you just uh, if, if you just Google the accessibility support for SharePoint Online, um, uh, th there's uh, an article there that uh, describes, I think, each element um, mm. from document library views, uh, files and folders, and, and so on. Uh, that, that's all uh, explained. It also has a what's new in accessibility for SharePoint Online as well. So it might be worth checking out that guide, uh, but off the top of my head, I don't know if it meets us. Right. <laughs> I, I do know, for example, like in the image and image gallery web parts, there are places built into the web part to put in alt text and things like that, which uh, are, I think, for text readers. But um, aside from that, yeah, I think it's just whatever is built in to SharePoint Online in general. So yeah, you'd have to look at that Microsoft guidance for that. Great, excellent. And we can uh, follow up with a link to that article as well, just mm -hmm. to make sure we get the right one. So mm -hmm. I think that's uh, all of the questions. Uh, so okay. um, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, attending. Uh, Sandy, do you have yeah. any last words? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so, other than I think I, I just want to yeah, put my contact details there. So again, Sandy Yu on Twitter or Sandy at lightningtools.com if you have um, further questions that, that I can help with, I'd be happy to. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sandy. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.